Welcome to section 40 of the viruses. This is an overview figure listing all the viruses you need to know for step one. In this section, we will continue our discussion of the picornaviruses by talking about rhinovirus. Our story takes place in a pretty valley. You got the pink sky and beautiful grass. Well, that pink sky will help you remember that rhinovirus is an RNA virus. Remember that we use red and warm color schemes to represent RNA viruses. So red warm colors for RNA virus. Look at that beautiful rainbow back there. It brings all those positive vibes. This indicates that rhinovirus is a positive sense virus. So positive rainbow for positive sense. Now what about this story will help you remember that this is rhinovirus, this stampede of rhinos. You see, this oppressive peacock emperor has crossed the rhinos for the last time and in the process started a stampede. So this stampede of rhinos will help you remember rhinovirus. As I just mentioned, the villain is this oppressive peacock emperor. The tables have turned against him in this story and now he hangs helpless. The fact that he's a peacock will help you remember that rhinovirus is a picornavirus. So peacock, picornavirus. As we discussed in previous videos, this emperor doesn't go anywhere without his rich person walking stick. It has that icosahedral shaped gem on the top. This gem is to help you remember that rhinovirus, as well as all picornaviruses, have an icosahedral capsid. So again, icosahedral gem for icosahedral capsid. Now looking again at the stampede, we can see that they form a nice long line. This line of rhinos represents the fact that rhinovirus is a linear virus. So line of rhinos for linear virus. Now did you happen to notice how many rhinos there are? There are over a hundred of them extending way back into the horizon. This represents the fact that rhinovirus has over a hundred serotypes. So hundreds of rhinos stampeding stands for over 100 serotypes of rhinovirus. Unfortunately, some of these rhinos have fallen in this acid pit. You can see their skin get all destroyed and eaten away. This indicates that rhinovirus is acid labile, which means it's destroyed when exposed to acid. So when rhinovirus ever reaches the stomach, it will get destroyed. Thus, it's not an enterovirus like poliovirus and echovirus. After all, to be an enterovirus, you need to replicate in the intestines. And if you get destroyed by the stomach acid, that's a pretty quick way to count yourself out of being an enterovirus. So again, rhinos getting destroyed by acid stands for rhinovirus being acid labile. Now this henchman to the left thought it would be a good time to take his clothes off and sunbathe. How wrong he was. He wasn't expecting this rhino revolt to run right past his sunbathing nakedness. Anyways, but the point is that he's naked. This will help you remember that rhinovirus is a naked virus. So naked henchman for naked virus. Now much like his careless co-henchman, this guy's also naked. As the rhinos ran past, he got knocked into this nasty little mud pit. Look at him sink into that mud. This naked henchman getting swallowed up by the mud represents the fact that naked viruses enter host cells through endocytosis. Contrast this to enveloped viruses, which enter the cell by fusing their lipid membranes to the bilipid membranes of the host cell. But anyways, naked viruses just get swallowed up by the cell or endocytosed, just like this naked alligator is getting swallowed up by the mud. Now I'm sure you noticed those big asteroids in the background. Well that one big asteroid has broken into smaller ones and now each one is booming down towards the ground. This represents the fact that when rhinovirus is first translated, the protein product is huge. Then that giant protein gets cleaved into several smaller functional viral proteins. So again, big asteroid breaking into a bunch of smaller ones will help you remember that rhinovirus starts as a big protein and then gets cleaved into smaller ones. Now as these rhinos continue their stampede, naturally they're kicking up all kinds of dust. As you can see, this is causing one of the fully dressed IRS workers to cough horribly. Look at that cough with all its glory and poetic justice. This represents the fact that rhinovirus can cause a cough. So coughing henchmen for coughing with rhinovirus. Another important symptom, likely the most common symptom of rhinovirus, is the congestion and mucus that it causes. Did you notice this rhino with all this mucus pouring out of his nose? Poor guy has a cold and he still has to fight for his people. A stampede happens when a stampede is needed, no matter how sick you are. Anyways, this poor guy with snot dripping from his nose will help you remember the mucus and all its associated problems, like congestion. So again, this rhino with snot and mucus stands for mucus drainage with rhinovirus. Now all these rhinos are stampeding toward the IRS building. As mentioned in previous picornavirus videos, the IRS is how this emperor peacock enforces his oppressive taxation like evil kings of the middle ages. To fight back, these rhinos are striking at the heart of the emperor's power, the IRS. If you need a refresher on this concept, please see the poliovirus lecture. Now witnessing his place of employment about to get demolished, this IRS henchman is nervously pulling at his collar. This represents pharyngitis, which can occur with a rhinovirus infection. What happens is all the mucus will drain back into the pharynx and cause irritation and inflammation, leading to pain or pharyngitis. So nervous henchman pulling at his collar stands for pharyngitis. 
Now that we've completed all the items in the image, let's review with a question. An eight-year-old boy presents with his father due to a sore throat and a mild cough. The boy states it has been difficult to swallow due to pain. The boy's father complains that the boy has constantly been wiping his snot on his clothes for the past week. A rapid antigen detection test and a culture for group A streptococcus, or GAS, are both negative. Which of the following statements is true regarding the most likely pathogen? A. Functional virions can be excreted in the feces. B. Ribosomes translate viral nucleotides without prior viral transcription. C. Functional virions replicate in the nucleus of the host cell. Or D. Host cell ribosomes attach to the 5' cap to initiate translation. Now hopefully you notice the symptoms describe a common cold. There's lots of mucus drainage. The dad even complained of all the snot the kid produces. And the boy had a sore throat, likely a manifestation of mucus draining down his pharynx, or postnasal drip. And at this point, we're not concerned about a streptococcal infection since these two tests were negative, the rapid antigen detection test and the culture. And since we believe this is the common cold, what is the most likely pathogen? It's rhinovirus. Rhinovirus is the most common cause of the common cold. After that, it's coronavirus. So number one, rhinovirus, and number two, coronavirus. And recall that the common cold has lots of mucus drainage and even pharyngitis, and sometimes a cough. So which statement is true of rhinovirus? It's choice B. Host cell ribosomes can directly translate viral nucleotides without prior transcription. This answer choice describes how a positive sense virus is immediately translatable. Host ribosomes can snag the virus and start making a protein from it. Contrast this to a negative sense virus, which would first need to be transcribed with its own RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. After that transcription, then the host ribosome can grab it and start translating it into a protein. But anyways, rhinovirus is a positive sense virus, and choice B describes that. Now choice A is wrong because rhinovirus is acid labile. That means that it gets killed as soon as it reaches the stomach acid. So functional virions are unlikely to make it to the feces unharmed. Now choice C is wrong because RNA viruses all replicate inside the cytoplasm, not the nucleus. The only exceptions are influenza and retroviruses. Now finally, choice D is wrong because picornaviruses lack the 5' cap. Instead, they have an internal ribosomal entry site. And it's this that initiates translation. And that's all you need to know about rhinovirus.